The stops coming with 73 laps to go. So it's Green, Gordon, and Martin, the top three in the triple box. We go to Dave Burns. The last time Jeff Green radioed into Harold Holley, he said it's way, way tight coming off. So they're going to make an adjustment to try to take care of that. By the way, the guy from Jeremy Mayfield's crew who's helping out today, that is Scott Wolf from the Winston Cup side. He runs around to the left side now as they try to finish. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon's crew getting the left side done, and they are out first. Marty Snyder. For the first time all day, Mark Martin has been tight. They put two rounds into the right rear. It is a four-tire stop for Mark Martin, and he will not win the race off pit road 17-4 on the stop. Jeff Gordon gets off pit road first. His crew gets him out ahead of Mark Martin and Jeff Green. 72 laps to go in the Miami 300. Green flag, green flag. Harvick, the lap car, sliding in between Gordon and Martin. That's real good news for Jeff Gordon. Oh, Mark does get by Kevin Harvick quickly. On the subject of Harvick, we have just been informed by NASCAR that he has won the 2000 Rookie of the Year title in the NASCAR World Series. So congratulations goes out to Kevin Harvick. Four-year-old from Bakersfield, California. Three wins in his rookie season in Bush Series competition, driving for Richard Childress Racing. Right now, though, he's 15th in the in the race As Mark Martin hangs right with Jeff Gordon, and here comes Jeff Green to try and clear the traffic. Jeff Gordon leads the Miami 300 over Mark Martin and Jeff Green, the three of them within a second, and there are 57 laps to go. Last lap, both Jeff Gordon had the quickest lap Actually, Jeff Green was a little bit quicker than either. Jeff Green had the quickest lap. It was Jeff Gordon and Martin Martin in second spot. On board with Jeff Green, the third place cars. He looks at Mark Martin and trying to figure out how he can get by Mark. And can he get up to Jeff Gordon? Both Gordon and Martin making their final starts in Bush Series competition here today. Let's get more on Jeff Gordon's car from Dave. Well, Lance Dieters, the crew chief, radioed to Jeff Gordon, and he said, you may have to baby it on this set of tires. There was 70 to go when the green came out, and the stop previous, their right front showed the same cord damage that we showed you earlier on Jeff Green's right front. So they told him, Jeff, you better baby those tires because they're going to have to go to the end. Marty Snyder? And Mark Martin radioed to his crew and wanted to know the same thing. Tony Martin said, be conservative for right now. Let's be patient for about five or six more laps, then we can push it. You have to remember, this set of tires has to go about eight laps more than the set of tires that Mark Martin ran all the way down to the cord. He said, behind you, Jeff Green is fast. Don't pay attention to him. Pay attention to Jeff Gordon. He's the one we have to race for the win. The driver be conservative on his tires. Well, they just they back off a little bit early going in the corner. They don't really wrestle with the steering wheel right there in the middle. They kind of turn the steering wheel gently and get back on the throttle gently. Try to drive the car as easy as they can. No more, no quick her herky jerky movements with that steering wheel. That will slide that tire across the racetrack and wear it out quickly. Elton Sawyer has just retired his car from the event. He will wind up finishing in 40th position. Sixth car out of the race so far. Mark Martin's crew, Jeff Gordon's crew, they know that the 10 car of Jeff Green wore his right front tire out quicker than they did. So they're not really concerned about Jeff Green right now. All they're concerned about is making that right front last till the end of the race. Car starting the race, but they just felt it was something they had to do to be able to finish. Jeff Gordon leads Mark Martin and Jeff Green with 46 laps to go in the Miami 300. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. It's the season finale for the NASCAR Bush Series from Homestead Miami Speedway. Jeff Gordon there leading the Miami 300. Then a series of caution flag pit stops. Jeff Gordon got out first. Green fell back to third. And that's where we stand now with 40 laps to go. It's Jeff Gordon leading. At an average speed of 121.7 miles an hour, about eight miles an hour slower than the track record here for the Bush Series. It looked like that Martin Martin was going to come up and contest Jeff Gordon for the lead. He got himself into about, oh, I don't know, four or five tenths of the lead, but all of a sudden he started pulling away from Jeff Gordon, Jeff from Martin Martin again. I'm 
I'll get this out in a minute. <laughs> Come on, BP. Yeah. <laughs> I can say it eventually. There you go. And Mark Martin, look at this, closing in on Jeff Gordon. Chopped down another couple of car lengths on him. Last time by, he was about a half mile per hour faster than Jeff Gordon. Here he comes off the line. Mm. That time, he was still about a half mile per hour faster than Jeff Gordon. Marty has more on Mark Martin. Well, Benny, you speculated earlier that when Mark Martin pulled up to Jeff Gordon, that he uh, Jeff Gordon pulled away from him. Actually, Mark kind of let off at that point. There's a speculation among his pit crew. Mark hasn't said a word, but they think he was just trying out the car, seeing if he could get to Jeff Gordon, and he did. So he backed off, saved his tires for a little bit more, and I just asked Tony Lambert, did you just tell him to go? And he just smiled as if they know who the winner of this race might be. Mark Martin is closing on Jeff Gordon. He's running faster than Gordon each successive lap. We're closing in on the finish of the Miami 300. Stay with us. We'll find out how it turns out. Twenty-nine laps to go in the Miami 300. Mark Martin is closing on Jeff Gordon. Ron Young, Martin closed up on the back bumper of him, has to go to the high side. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon's on the inside of Chad Chapman in the 25 car. Both drivers making their final start in the NASCAR Bush Series. Gordon, of course, only running a handful of events last year and this, trying to get his fifth Bush Series win. Mark Martin, the winningest driver in series history just this season. He's got five wins, 45 overall to add on to the all-time record with one final checkered flag. Last four or five years, the 60 car Mark Martin has been Mr. Bush when it comes to this series, this ser touring series. The guy to beat about every time he showed up. And you know, this is one of the few tracks that Mark has run a Bush series race on in the last five years that he hasn't won it. His best finisher is third on three occasions. See Jeff Gordon going to the corner on the outside of Tony Raines. Oh, Mark has to go on the outside as well. If Mark can catch Jeff passing the car on the outside off the corner, he might be able to sneak on the inside and go three wide down the straightaway, get position. But, Mark, but Jeff has got to catch that car at a perfect spot for him, and I think Jeff is probably a little bit too wise for that. Talked about Mark running easy for a while and now turning up the heat, trying to save that right front. How much do we think Jeff Gordon was doing the same thing, and does he maybe have something left to try and put on Mark. I mean, we've still got 27 laps to go. Very possibly. Both these race car drivers, Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, very, very intelligent when it comes to saving that car and knowing exactly how hard you can run the car. They pulled away from third place Jeff Green by two and a half seconds, 2.63. The margin now from leader Gordon back to Jeff Green, so he has fallen out of the chase here. And in fact, Jason Keller, his teammate, is closing a little bit on him for third spot. He's still got a ways to go before he'll catch it. Interesting to watch how much the racing line has changed throughout the day. They all started out trying to hug that yellow line all the way around the insides of the corners. Now they're both going down below it at both ends of the racetrack, getting into the corner. Then they kind of let the car run up a little bit and then cut back down below it. Watch Mark just goes down on the apron of the racetrack. I think there's some grip there with that left side tire. I think all the cars have been on the racetrack. I think it's very slippery there. I think when they go down to the left, they're getting some grip with that left side, and that's why they're doing it. Focusing on the race for the lead. There are 14 cars on the lead lap, but this is the closest race for position at the moment, and it's a good one, as Martin continues to stalk and chase Jeff Gordon to try and find a way around him. We talk about these banks, only six degrees banking in the corner, but the the, pave, the apron of the racetrack is completely flat. Going to take a commercial break here. This is our last commercial break. We go from here to the checkered flag to see who wins the Miami 300. We'll come back. Up next on NBC, it's the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame taking on the Boston College Eagles. The Irish trying to avenge an upset loss at the hands of BC a year ago. That's next, right after our race here on NBC. Watching the fight for the win in the Miami 300 between Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin. They've been in and out of lap traffic, and the interval between them has shifted accordingly. And Jeff Gordon is really getting a break now. Most of these guys are moving over. Kevin LePage, the 71 car. They're moving up the racetrack and giving these guys the preferred line on the bottom of the racetrack. 
if, all, if some of these guys were stay on the bottom and force Jeff to pass them on the outside and they do it off the corner, that would be the chance of Mark Martin East to jump on the inside and try to pass Jeff Gordon. As they begin to race harder and harder for the win, remember, tires are a story in this race. At 60 laps earlier in a couple of sets of pit stops, we began to see some Ford showing through the right front tires on some of these cars. They stopped with 70 laps to go. If we go without the yellow to the finish. And we see the Jason Leffler in the 43 car battling for position. This is for 13th and 14th and Leffler has it. Last couple of cars on the lead lap there and look at Mark Martin closing in on the back bumper of Jeff Gordon. 19 to go. Catching him's one thing. Passing him to another. Here's another because when these cars anymore, they're so aerodynamic. When they pull up behind another car, you lose the full complement of air on the nose of the car. You lose that downforce, and the car starts, the front starts sliding off the corner as you accelerate. We call that an arrow push. See, now Jeff Gordon got a break. He caught the car going in the corner. That was Randy LaJoy caught him going in the corner. He was able to get his car down to the bottom, to the groove. Gordon's put a little space on Mark Martin here in these last couple of laps. All of a sudden, he seems to pick up some speed. He's about three quarters of a second now in front of Mark Martin. There's the interval between the two. Let's go down to Marty Snyder. Some concern in the Mark Martin pit. He radioed to the crew. He said the right front is starting to wear very badly. I'm a little concerned about it. And all Tony Lambert said is do what you can do. And it appears that Mark Martin may be giving up the ghost on trying to win this race. Watch this car slide up the racetrack. We've seen him down on this yellow line all the way through. Oh, once again, that big wiggle off turn four. Boy, Mark Martin right now is, is fighting a very ill-handling race car. And Jeff Gordon getting out to that kind of a lead. Now he can try and take care of his tire, too. He can kind of slow down to Martin's pace and just try and keep that gap between them. Because, again, Gordon's going to have the same concerns about his right front. Run the 70 laps on that set of tires. So... This could still change yet. If one of these guys is running too hard and ends up going right through that tire. Let's mention that P.J. Jones has just retired his car. Engine failure. As the reason out, we saw the smoke on the machine earlier. He's going to finish 37th today. 15 more laps to fight this thing. Mark Martin has to be looking at that scoreboard or talking to Tony Lambert every time down the straight away and said, how many more laps? How many more laps do I have to sit out here? And look at these guys on the apron of the racetrack, trying to find some grip someplace. Todd Bodine moves low, gives the leaders way. Todd lost five laps earlier in the event. When the mandatory kill switch for the ignition that's mounted on the steering wheel shorted out in turn one, right after the green flag. So the leaders by. Go. That is eight tenths of a second between Gordon and Martin. Well, what do you think, BP? You're in Martin's car. You know that right front starting to give you a little trouble. Do you try and cool it off? Can you try and cool it off and make a final charge? What is he doing? Well, I think he's just trying to finish the race right now. I think that's what he's trying to do, Alan, when he goes in the corner here, when he lets it drift up the racetrack like this. I think he's trying to take it easy on that right front. So you think he's kind of saying, okay, I, I give, I give, I, I surrender. I just yeah. want to see the checkered flag right now. Gordon to the inside of Jason Jarrett. Jarrett in 36 position, now six laps down. Had the hood up on his car earlier in the race. And once again, we, we keep talking about the right front there. When it's not anything that's wrong with a tire. The teams have just found if they use air to force these cars down, down the straightaway, they're much faster. But when they do that, the car travels so much that the tire leans in at the top, gains negative camber. Till only the inside of the tire is making contact with the racetrack and wearing out those four or five inches on the inside of the tire. Away from Jimmy Johnson. Drives away from Johnson just a little bit. Meanwhile, there comes Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin. Running one and two with just eight and a half laps to go. Bill Parsons car. Phil making his final drive in this machine. He's running in 20th now. Two laps down by the leader. Looks like Martin was able to close a little bit on Gordon there when they were getting around Phil. Gained about a quarter of a second. 
And there is Jeff Gordon's interval over Mark Martin. This could be determined. Martin's chance to win this thing could be determined by what kind of traffic they catch in the final couple of laps. Meanwhile, folks, this is a battle for the lead. The blue car is Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin in second spot. They come off the line five laps to go. Both these guys fighting very, very worn tires as they try to finish this next seven and a half miles. Final Bush Series drive for both Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin. Not going to run the Saturday shows anymore next season to concentrate on their Winston Cup Sunday effort. Both very determined to go out with a win and win the race. Both in position to try and do something about it over these final five laps. Gordon right now with the upper hand thanks to his pit crew. He got the lead on a pit stop that came back at lap 129. He has led since that point. Now 67 laps led for Jeff Gordon. And Jody Macek has gotten clear of the racetrack and we will stay under the green flag. Four, four to go. Jeff Gordon down on the bottom of the race. Look on the apron of the racetrack, not even using the track. That's supposed to be for the cleanup trucks down there, but these cars, these drivers are using that apron of the track because there's a little more grip there than up on the racetrack. Kelly Denton in the 77, giving the leader's way. More traffic just ahead. Mark slow, off the throttle, all the throttle, off the throttle. But he's hanging right with Gordon, and he's running identical lap speeds to him. Last time by, they were both at 141.71. This time, in fact, Mark even a little faster. And look at Mark on the apron of the racetrack, all the way on the apron, trying to take the car into the corner. I think Mark, 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 Mark right now, Jeff Gordon, they've forgotten about tires. There's one thing in their mind, win the race. Be two to go when they come back to the start-finish line. Jeff Gordon seeking his first NASCAR Busch Series win in over a year. Mark Martin seeking what would be his sixth win of the season. There's Rick Hendrick and Jack Roush, the two team owners, looking on. I don't think either one of them are think they're going to win. I think they're both concerned about these cars being able to finish. As I said, very, very worn tires on these cars. Mark flipping the dirt with the left side tires on his car in a desperate move to find some traction. Doing anything he can, just trying anything he can to gain on this blue car of Jeff Gordon. The white flag flies when they come out of turn four. Lap traffic is ahead. Jay Sauter, last car on the lead lap in 13th position. The leaders will catch as they come to the line. White flag is out. One more lap in the Miami 300. Gordon's lead would appear somewhat safe, but he can't afford a slip. Well, with Jay Sauter, will these slow cars make a difference? Mark Martin driving on the paper in the racetrack. Don't get in the dirt. There's no grip there, Mark. Half Jay a lap to go. Jay Sauter still up there. They go by Ron Young, and that's not a problem. Turn for the last time they're coming up. Martin trying to catch Gordon for a final victory if he can. Here they come off of turn number four to the checkered flag. He's not going to be able to do it. Jeff Gordon is going to win the Miami 300 over Mark Martin in both drivers' final event in the NASCAR Bush Series. A duel from pit stops at lap 129 to the checkers at lap 200. The pit crew got Jeff Gordon the lead, and he held it from there. I think that Mark Martin would have stayed in front, had his pit stop gotten him out there, and see a bunch of guys, happy guys, for that 24 car. Jeff Gordon's team getting the job done. He gets the lead on the pit stop, leads to the finish for Jeff Gordon. It would be his first win of the 2000 Bush Series season and his fifth career victory. He takes it unofficially by 0.24 seconds over Mark Martin. Less than three tenths of a second between the two. Here are the unofficial results of today's race. Let's go to get a word from our winner. Here's Dave Burns. And Jeff Gordon hops out of the Pepsi Chevy, finds his crew chief Lance Dieters, and Jeff, what does it mean to win in your final Bush Series start, but to beat the acknowledged king of the Bush Series, Mark Martin? Well, that's. That's quite a uh, feat, you know. Uh, man, he ran me hard. Uh, these guys just did an excellent job. Ricky Hendrick tested this car. I didn't even drive it until I got here, so he did an excellent job. I want to thank Hendrick Motorsports. Uh, they did a great job putting this car together. Of course, Pepsi and Fritos and uh, Chevrolet, Goodyear, Winter Circle, everybody involved with this team. 
Uh, I'm worn out. It's been a heck of a day, but uh, I owe all this team. They did a great job, and to do it by uh, outrunning Mark, man, he ran me hard. I didn't think I'd get him. What do you think your right front tire looks like about now? There's not much left of it. I about had to run through the grass to get around the track. Um, pretty tough place to get around. All right. Well, Jeff Gordon wins his fifth race of his Bush Series career. Let's go to Marty Snyder. And with Mark Martin, who uh, finishes out a, a terrific NASCAR Bush Series career by finishing second. Bobby Labonte tries to win the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship. Now to South Bend, Indiana. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, playing host to Boston College, will talk to you tomorrow from here in Homestead.